Just before getting to sports, a sports-related story, the annual Roger Bacon Sports Stag was held tonight, and the 12th Annual Hall of Fame Award was presented to Bill Lammert, Roger Bacon graduate and fine UC basketball player in the 50s. Some of his former teammates, such as Jack Twyman, were there to see him get the award, as were most of the sports notables of the whole area. They were really there, quite a turnout. It was also the ninth Annual Good Fellowship Award, and uh, I was proud to be the recipient of that award, and I thank them very much for that. In the meantime, it is I time I congratulate you. Thank you very much, Walter. In the meantime, let us uh, move along to some of the other sports. I thought all the sports notables were in Detroit. Uh, you they know, weren't. The They're notables on their way up there, of course. <laughs> Well, San Francisco followers tonight have to be a little bit uneasy with the news late this afternoon that Freddie Solomon, the 49ers ace receiver, came up with a knee injury, which brings the question, what is his status for Sunday? For that answer, we'll call on Dennis Jansen for a live report from Detroit. Thank you very much, Walter. You are indeed correct. Freddie Solomon listed as questionable for Super Bowl Sunday. Here's what happened. Mm -hmm. He was uh, participating in the 49ers workout this morning when he ran into a teammate and sprained his knee. He is listed as questionable for Sunday's Super Bowl. That would be a big loss to San Francisco. He has 59 receptions for 969 yards, a total of eight touchdowns. He averages 16 yards per reception. He is second on the team in receptions behind Dwight Clark. He is, of course, the eight-year veteran of the NFL who came to San Francisco by way of the Miami Dolphins. Another bit of uh, sort of hard news came out of this morning's Forrest Gregg news conference. When Forrest took exception to a written report in, the morning in a Detroit morning newspaper that quoted a CBS sports executive as saying he was a bit out of sorts because he didn't feature the 49ers-Bengals matchup in Super Bowl 16 as being very exciting. Well, Forrest, of course, took exception to that. He said that our team is as exciting as any team that could ever play in the Super Bowl. He said we deserve to be here, so be it. Tough luck, in other words. Don, there seems to be a lot of sniping back and forth here, perhaps some frayed edges. Some people don't seem to be having a very good time here in Pontiac, Michigan, specifically some of the writers and reporters. Would you agree? Yeah, it would seem that, uh, I don't know if it's a popular notion or not, but it would seem that uh, what has been written lately, not by all of the reporters, of course, but what is going around by some of them is that uh, Super Bowl 16 is losing some of its luster because it's being held in Pontiac, Michigan, not exactly the heartland of the world, they're saying. So after reading all these reports and everything, I went out and we took a look at the situation. And the question is, does the media hate Detroit? Football's a cold weather game. It doesn't belong on the West Coast or the South. So all these people who are saying that it belongs someplace else, you disagree with? I very firmly disagree with them. Well, this must be the type of thing that Michiganians are getting so upset about. Here's Sports Illustrated football writer Paul Zimmerman says that the Super Bowl week in Detroit reminds him of the Moscow Olympics, but the security guards were nicer in Moscow. Hmm. We'll have to go try and find this Mr. Zimmerman. My media comrade Zimmerman must have been in seclusion brushing up on his Russian. We were unable to locate him either here in the press room in his hotel room or even out at the Pontiac Silverdome. However, we did find a print colleague. Well, I'll tell you something of Paul Zimmerman. He's doing that just to be perverse. Uh, I really, he doesn't really mean it, which I think maybe is worse than meaning it. Uh, there are obviously no barbed wire fences around here. You have to realize that sports writers are basic, basically chronic complainers. Otherwise, you would not be in this business. So you have to take that as a, with a grain of salt. Perhaps the flack is fabricated, just a favor to those of us in search of stories, although the mayor of Pontiac does have his own personal theory. I think that uh, some fat cat wants to sit in the sun and watch a football game, and uh, because he's, he wants to make a vacation out of it, but we are entitled to it in this area. We got it here, and we're going to have it again, and I'm sure that the people that uh, decided to let the championship game come to this area knew what they were doing. Personally, I think this is a perfect place for the Super Bowl. After all, this is a shot in a beer town, part of what football's about. And the Midwest of the East, it's the cradle of the NFL, where the National Football League was born. Finally, show me a Sunbelt state that could glamorize or symbolize Super Bowl 16 in snow. From Detroit, this is Don Burroughs, Eyewitness 12 Sports. A vacation in the sun, huh? Well, in any event, we will be back at 11.30 tonight with another edition of Super Natty. And I understand, Walter, that the injury to Freddie Solomon has caused the odds to fluctuate a little bit? 
Well, indeed it has, Denny. If you place any faith now in the odds makers, the morning line at Harrah's and Las Vegas open even money on the big game. But as the door bore on, the day bore on, I should say, and the news, of course, of Solomon, the San Francisco 49ers were getting the bulk of a better's attention and a two to three point favorite, subject to change, of course. Meet Tennessee's courageous new beauty queen, Friday on PM Magazine. Hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining us as we come to you live from the Pontiac Silverdome. This is Super Natty. I'm Dennis Jansen, joined by Don Burroughs. And tonight on Super Natty, we're going to meet Mrs. Forrest Gregg. And get your dancing feet ready. We also take a look at the halftime show. We're going to preview that up with people. And we're also going to profile the Bengals' defensive backs and linebackers. All that yet to come on Super Natty. Ain't no stopping Super Nanny. Super Nanny. No stopping. Super Nanny. No stopping. Super Nanny. No stopping. Super Nanny. No stopping. Ain't no stopping Cincinnati now. Ain't no stopping now. The Super Daddy Cincinnati Bengals countdown to Super Bowl 16, a wrap up of today's Super Bowl preparations in Pontiac and Detroit with Eyewitness 12 Sports Director Dennis Jansen and sports reporter Don Burroughs. Super Natty is brought to you by RCA Video Equipment Supplies to the NFL. See your local dealers. And by the Mill Outlet, where you save on famous maker clothing. Go Bengals! And by Activision, game cartridges for use with Atari or Sears video games. And by Swallows, the friendly store with so much more. Serving Greater Cincinnati for over 33 years. And now, back to Pontiac, to DJ and Don. On this, the fourth day of Super Bowl preparations, the first bit of really hard sports news has come out of Super Bowl 16 here in Pontiac, Michigan. That being that the San Francisco 49ers wide receiver, Freddie Solomon, has uh, been listed as questionable now for Super Bowl Sunday after sustaining a knee injury in their workout this morning. He ran into a teammate during their morning workout. He strained his knee. You see him here in the highlights. He's number 88. He's their big threat man, big play man. 59 receptions on the year, 8 TDs. He is listed as questionable for Super Bowl Sunday. And that should be good news for the Folos that we are going to profile tonight on our close-up report, that being the Cincinnati Bengals defensive backs and linebackers. Position by position, the Bengals' defense has the edge and experience, but the Niners have the better stats. They finished second in the NFC in total defense, yielding just 4,763 yards during the regular season. The Bengals gave up 5,289 yards in finishing fourth in the AFC defensive roll call. San Francisco with one more sack than the Bengals, 36 to 35 respectively. The Bengals better on run defense, the Niners better against the pass. Cincinnati with 19 interceptions, San Francisco with 27, three of those coming in their last meeting. Those combined with three fumbles, the difference in a 21-3 San Francisco win. In fact, the Niners played in that game like the Bengals had played in the previous 10, forcing turnovers. Yeah, uh, we didn't come up with the turnovers like we should have in the first game like we have been all season. You know? That's what we got to do, give the ball to our offense because we know they can score. While Bobby Kemp represents the new guard, Ken Riley is the old look in the Bengals secondary. The 13-year veteran has been through the good and the bad, but Cincinnati's all-time leading interceptor stands on the verge of joining the best. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, but uh, it was worth the wait. Uh, I'm happy for everybody, and I just hope that uh, we can go on the 24th and, and win it all. Looking at both teams' high-powered offenses, most have predicted a wide-open, high-scoring game. But Mike Fuller, the six-year veteran who came on waivers from San Diego, thinks it will be just the opposite. Bill Walsh and some of the others said it's going to be a high-scoring game. I don't, I don't agree with that. Uh, I think it, it, could, it could turn into that if, if uh, there are a lot of mental mistakes. But if both teams play the kind of ball they're capable of, it would be a very tight ball game. Uh, and you know a lot of a lot of action, but very little scoring. So we have to put, play a very uh, mistake-free game to win. Lewis Breeden, who finished the regular season with four interceptions, put his name in the record book with a 102-yard return against San Diego to tie the all-time record for the return of an interception. Then at free safety, it's Brian Hicks, number 27. He rounds out the defensive backfield with Ray Griffin, John Simmons, and Oliver Davis waiting in the wings. In the middle, at linebacker, the Bengals have the edge in experience. All of the starters with at least six years in the league. Jim LeClaire, the team's all-time leading tackler, anchors things at left inside. 
uh, we're just going to have to go out and play the type of game that we play. And, and uh, if we uh, get the job done, uh, you know, I'm sure that we're going to come out on top. But we're going to have to play a tough, aggressive defensive game, and that's the type we like to play, and, uh, and that's what's got us this far. So uh, I'm pretty optimistic about our chances. Glenn Cameron, number 50, teams with LeClaire to form the inside duo. Outside, it's Reggie Williams, number 57, doing the damage. He led the club in sacks with 12, and some were no doubters. His counterpart on the other side is Bo Harris, number 53. The seven-year veteran has had an outstanding season, but like most of the Bengals backers, hasn't gotten the publicity deserved. One thing worries Bo in particular about this game, and it's the same thing that cost the Bengals their late season loss to San Francisco. What worries you most about this game? Uh, not playing our game, letting them play their game. I want to be able to, you know, we want to be a fill as a team. We need to play our game and not let them have control like they did the first time. There you have the starting defensive backfield and linebackers, Riley, Breed, Kemp, and Hicks, at linebacker, LeClaire, Williams, Cameron, and Harris. Super Natty. No stopping. Super Natty. No stopping. Super Natty. No stopping. Super Natty. Well, if you're Forrest Gregg, I suppose you understand how he can feel some nerves but get rid of it because he's down there on the sidelines calling some of the plays very involved in the game. But you've got to wonder how his wife feels, Barbara, sitting in the stands watching her husband and worrying about the team's plight. Vicki Yates Orr has that particular story. The story that I have for you tonight is a halftime preview of Up With People, a very interesting group, and they have some twists and some different angles. But we begin right now with the report on Barbara Gregg from Vicki Yates Orr. Coach Forrest Gregg surely has a lot on his mind right about now. After all, Sunday he's going to push his championship team on to, hopefully, a Super Bowl win. Pushing Coach Gregg on, however, is his better half, Barbara Gregg, who says being a football coach's wife is not as difficult as it looks. Well, I don't think it's very hard. I, I think everything is pretty good. It's the life I love. So I can't think of really, the only thing is, is maybe going, not being able to go out as much with your husband privately. That's the hardest part. But you have to remember, the Greggs have had a lot of practice living in the world of football. After all, Forrest was a player himself, making it to the Super Bowl three times before. But now, as coach, it's different. Do you feel there's any kind of pressure on him during the Super Bowl game? Well, there's pressure with the press. I mean, you, you know, you can just do so much. And uh, it's always pressure in coaching. And there's another kind of pressure that comes with the Super Bowl. Do you find you have all new relatives all of a sudden? Relatives we didn't even know existed. <laughs> they only have the same name. Well, most of Cincinnati feels like family to the Bengals, no matter what the last name. And no matter what the outcome, the Bengal family will welcome their relatives home on Monday. Vicki Yates Orr, Eyewitness 12 News, Cincinnati. Up With People was born in 1965. Since then, they have put on thousands of shows featuring people, not entertainers, but people from all over the world. A lot of people see only the show of Up With People and think it's just the singing and dancing, but it's a whole lot more than that. Uh, and I think Up With People, uh, we've been called the ambassadors of peace of the world. And I, I really agree with that title because uh, I don't know of any other group that can go out and just do a show and get so involved in the community and get to know people from everywhere and give something to a community instead of just taking from it. 400 people from 21 different countries will perform during the halftime show this Super Sunday and none of them will be paid. As a matter of fact, Dave Atterio gave up a $17,000 per year job at IBM. He paid $5,300 on top of that and gave up his free time to become part of Up With People for one year. You can travel a year as a regular cast member and after a year is over, you can apply for a, a staff job. Each cast has a staff of about 20 people that travel with us, and they do various functions. Uh, we have a nurse, uh, a show manager who oversees the, the general look of the show. Uh, we have a promotional staff who uh, advance, goes into cities ahead of time to look for host families, to promote the show, uh, and schedule our activities while we're in a particular city. Don't you consider it an enormous sacrifice in your time? plus paying out the money in an industry which is known for usually paying fairly 
really big dollars. Uh -huh. The money, I, I don't know, it's, the, the tuition is very expensive for a lot of people in Oakland. You think, God, $5,300 in one lump, lump sum, it's a lot. But what I'm getting in return is worth more to me than any amount of money that I could ever pay. The people I've met, the places I've seen, the things I've learned about myself and about other people, it's been more than worth it. I, I love it. <laughs> Being a part of Up With People is usually a one-year experience. For either monetary reasons or just no room in the group, only 5% of these people will return again next year. But as Dave said, whether he's back again next year or not, this is a year that he will not forget. From the Pontiac Silverdome, this is Don Burroughs, Eyewitness 12 Sports. Super Natty. Life has its good moments and its bad ones. But when the game's over, you have to escape from it all. Millions of people escape with music, and thousands of people like you and I have made our escape with sound equipment from Swallens Audio. Weekly football specials at Swallens make it easy to escape with techniques and TDK at greatly reduced prices. So no matter what your line of work, make your escape with music and sound equipment from Swallens Audio. Bengal fans are ready for exciting Super Bowl action this Sunday in the Pontiac Silverdome. Preserve those plays and replays forever. Check out the RCA convertible. It's really two VCRs in one. It records my TV favorites, and it converts to a portable home movie outfit. So I can record Moose's big plays, too. RCA and your neighborhood RCA dealer wish all the Bengals victory over the 49ers in this Sunday's Super Bowl 16. Well, that just about wraps up another edition of Super Natty as we come to you live from the Pontiac Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan. Scene of Super Bowl 16 this Sunday. But I tell you what, everywhere you look up here, there are stories and interesting people to be found and talked to and interviewed. And tomorrow night on our Friday night edition of Super Natty, we are going to talk with uh, Ken Anderson and see what Kenny was like now and then. We have some historic footage of Ken when he played with Augustana College. You won't believe it. It's great mm. stuff, Don. Is it true he was... Uh... He went to Augustan as a basketball player. That's right. Wrote a letter to the coach asking, make, asking if he could try out for the football team. Man, I should have tried that. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that. Well, uh, and we'll take since it is getting so close to uh, Super Sunday, I figure we should take a look at some of the San Francisco 49ers who will be shut down by the Bengals. Huh? Now, some of the key uh, 49er players. And tomorrow night here on Super Natty, George Chickarone and Rob North are going to explore the Super Bowl ball scene. Hmm. We'll have the economy model and the top shelf version. That <laughs> will certainly be interesting. Again, on behalf of Don Burroughs, I'm Dennis Jansen. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for watching Super Natty. Ain't no stopping Super Natty. No stopping, super no stopping, super no stopping, super no stopping. Ain't no stopping Cincinnati now. Ain't no stopping now. The Super Daddy Cincinnati Bengals countdown to Super Bowl 16, a wrap up of today's Super Bowl preparations in Pontiac and Detroit with Eyewitness 12 sports director Dennis Jansen and sports reporter Don Burroughs. Super Natty has been brought to you by Swallens, the friendly store with so much more. Best of luck, Bengals. And by Activision, game cartridges for use with Atari or Sears video games. And by RCA, see the convertible at your local RCA dealer. And by the Mill Outlet, where you save on famous maker clothing. Good luck, Bengals. We know you can do it. That's it from the Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan tonight. Super Natty is a production of Eyewitness 12 News.